quickest, maddest, most chaotic, most emphatic win of the season. It was a mess. It was anarchy. It was chaos. But it was prime Barclays, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we live for. That's the football of the early 2000s. No control. No predictability. No nothing. Just pure, absolute head loss in every department, but I loved it, I lived it, I took my top off for it, I nearly broke furniture for it. We have beaten Tottenham 4-3 at the White Hart Lane, Tottenham Hotspurs, Toilet Bowl, Stadium. I don't care if we deserved it or not, people can talk about that later in the breakdown, but I am so gassed to come away with the three points, especially after going 2-0 down. At a bare minimum, the mentality to respond to adversity has to be credited, has to be given some credence. Honest to God, I mean, the way that team came out, Badi Shul, Sanchez, Colwell for the goal, Solanke. You know, the way we were playing in the first few minutes, we were getting absolutely dog walked, yeah? They were dunking on us, even though I had a basketball in the preview. They were walking us around the pitch to their heart's content. They were going for the jugular. They could have had three, four. And I was just hanging on inside for dear life. Mistake after mistake in the first phase. We couldn't build up from the back to save our lives. It was mad. So to, to, to come through all of that and to have three points in that fashion, in that manner, with the way that it's being, you know, after the game, we've got so many things to talk about in terms of the players. I love this team. I love the personality in this team. They drive me crazy. They send us to the wolves, right? But I love this team and I love this manager. Guys, what did we watch? What on earth did we witness? Take it in. That was, that was chaos. It was similar to last season in many ways. <sighs> Baddy Ashil, by the way, I said right side centre back in the preview. I'm going to hold my hands up. I'm wearing my Spurs top, my, my basketball top, because we went hooping. Guys, <sighs> the way that Baddy Ashil was just being pressed and shown onto his unfavoured side on that right foot, he was just passing it into no man's land all day long, giving the ball away at every opportunity, putting Lavia in hot water with an elbow, which he showed on his Instagram with his head cut. Even when he went to the left-hand side, giving the ball away in the final final third of the, of the match, just giving me stress, giving me heartache and pain. I was ready to hook him off for tossing or whoever was on that bench. So it just goes to show the gap and golfing class in regards to him and the starting centre-back that we have at the club at the moment with Colwell and Fofana. And even Colwell, listen, Kukurea today, I know he's binned his boots in the bin. I know, he, I know he's put them to the side. You, brother, two goals, both of them coming from your slips. The first one just bundles over, falls to the ground. And then, obviously, Colwell is outdone, really, by Solanke's movement. Boom, boom, bang, back of the net. And I'm, I'm thinking, this is, this is a horror, horror show. Then we've got another moment. Actually, don't forget Badi Ashil's wayward pass that allowed Kuliseski to, to, to have a clear run on goal, which Lavia, off the ball today, closed down more intensely, closed down with more velocity, with, with, with a bit more bite about you, get stuck in. He was backing off, backing off, backing off before it was a cha-cha-cha slide. Then... On the second goal, you've got Kukurea again, slipping, comes into the middle of the pitch, Kuliseski, Lavia, get into him. You know, Colwell's maybe covering the right side if he was to go to and, cut and, and, and play the pass with reverse. Get into him, get into him. It's a London derby. People are talking, Grizz on the watch along. Oh, you know, it's not a pretty game, is it? It's not very systematic. It's not very, you know, controlling. I couldn't give two left tits. I couldn't give left bollock. This is a London derby. You've got to get stuck in. You've got to win your 50-50s. You've got to be intense. You've got to get amongst it. Get amongst it. But, but, after that second goal goes in, I'm thinking, yeah, I'll take a point. I'm 2-0 down at Tottenham. I will take a point because we know Tottenham this season have it in their, you know, have it in their locker, have it in their psyche, in their mentality, in their physicality to go and win big games against Man City, right? Go and put in big performances. So, I'm thinking to myself, I'll take a point. Arsenal dropped points today. Man City dropped points yesterday. Everybody's flapping, floundering points. Man United lost. Listen, I, I've been saying we're not in the title race, so you can, you, I, I don't want us to draw. I want us to win, but I'll take the point. 2 no down, I'll take the point. Now we get on to the praise. Now we get on to the people that need their name up in lights today. 
Enzo Fernandez and Jaden Sancho. Jaden Sancho today, 20 million or 25 million obligation. Give it to me now. Hand it over. Send the cash. Because the way he's been playing, when he's played this season in the Prem, assists. I was asking, can you get more shots off? Can you give me output on in front of goal? I saw you score goals at Dortmund. Southampton, cool. It was a, it was a battering. It was a blaming. This game, that finish cutting in off the left foot to give us life, to give us to give us energy, to give us a way back in. What a finish! Wrapped his foot around it, stuck it in the bot corner. Unbelievable finish, right? Testing that Fraser Foster, second choice keeper for Spurs, and then, I mean, listen, make no mistake, Jackson today was jarring me, right? Should have gotten the end of a, a cross that came into the box. Should be doing better when he's running in behind, going 1v1s. Just frustrating figure. Not the Jackson I expect. Not the Jackson that I, that I tune in for. Neto could have even been better as well, you know, um, on that right and flank. I feel like he didn't quite cook a dogie as much as he could have. But it is cool because Enzo Fernandez turned up. Cole Palmer stood up, right? Lavia on the ball in that first half, breaking lines, just fantastic passing through the t through the Tottenham team, creating opportunities at will. The, the, the thing that was so stressful today is we were creating and we saw the gaps, we saw the openings, we saw the space, but they were creating and they saw the openings, they saw the gaps and they saw the space and we were making individual errors. So I didn't know which way this game was going to go at halftime. We're 2-1 down. I'm thinking, rah. Like I said, I'll take a point because as much as I can see us scoring, I can also see us conceding. And then second half... Basuma just goes crashing in, diving in, and we get a penalty, and, and Cole Palmer sticks it away, and I am elated. And now you just marvel in Enzo and Sancho just looking after the ball today, looking after the ball today, really treating it like it's their offspring, like it's their son, you know, like it's their daughter. Just shepherd, shep, sh you know, just, uh, I don't have the words. Their decision-making. The one-twos from Sancho on that left-hand side to create opportunities, to take shots and test Fraser, Fraser Foster. Enzo, in tight spaces today, fantastic. Receiving the ball under the press, getting out of things, going through players, nutmegs we're seeing now. We're starting to control and dictate the tempo in this game at 2-2. We're starting to strut our stuff. We're still giving away chances, by the way. Tottenham are still missing chances. I think they had three big chances in the first half. We, had, we somehow didn't have any. Um, they leave that chance that they leave that game with six big chances created. We've only created two. Their XG was somehow lower than ours. So I don't know what was going on in that match in terms of chances being created. Both keepers having to make saves. But we were giving away some crazy chances. There were tappings for us. There were tappings for them. You know, you're thinking to yourself, what what way is this gonna go? And then on that right hand side, Cole Palmer, who was really again just ticking away, starting to impact the game, starting to get involved. He, he could have scored. I mean, he missed kicks a shot in the first half. He tested the keeper. And then I think it was Neto on the rebound. So you're just you're just thinking to yourself, it may, may not be Cole Palmer's day in a big game. He's put away his penalty. He's, he's now gone and just started to dribble on that right-hand side, engineering an opportunity for Enzo Fernandez. And the way that he has struck this football, the way that he has laced this football, he has been absolutely fantastic in front of goal in recent weeks. Getting assists, but just the ball striking ability. This is what we crave for. This is what we pray for. When he signed for the club, when we were breaking the bank on the deadline day with Rui Costa, we're thinking, yo, not only can you pass, but you're going to get us a couple of goals like he did against Mexico in the World Cup. That strike is limbs. I know the away end was concussed. I know people have gone and, and bundled down many rows of fans today, singing songs and, and losing their head. What a finish from Enzo Fernandez. Left foot, weaker foot, crashed it past Foster. 3-2. Beautiful. Beautiful. And it's so fulfilling that Enzo is finally starting to play to the level that we all expected. Because you have to thank Enzo Maresca. Credit the mentality of Enzo and Sancho, Sancho the two players this season that come in. Man United, but I always stuck with Sancho. I said, that's a good player. That's a player that, listen, I don't care what Ten Hag says. That's a good player. Technically, he can link up. He can create low blocks. He can find a way through in between players, in between gaps, players to connect with, link up with. And then obviously the goal as well is just the absolute creme de la creme. But Enzo as well, the fact that he's been able to get to the level, to play with Caicedo and Lavio, this is what we all wanted, to see them together, to see the, the chemistry, the balance, goals, tackles, Press resistance, passing, everything that you want in your midfield. And then Cole Palmer at the end. I mean, stupid challenge again. 
think it from Saar on a yellow. And just Penenka. Penenka. <sighs> you're, you're killing me now. Now you're sending me into delirium. Now you're sending me into ecstasy. Penenka. In a game of this magnitude, with that pressure. Penenka. Cole Palmer, you're crazy. Cole Palmer, you're tapped in the head, brother. You're, you're lost. You're dazed. And they were trying to throw things on the pitch for every corner and put our players off. Hold that, yeah? Hold that. Solanke. Not only, he, he, yeah, he scored, but how many chances could, could he have put away? Could he have done better? Kuliseski could have done better even though he scored today. They were, they were missing chances. By no means will I sit here and say that our defence was good today. We were so poor defensively. Everybody at the back, Sanchez, Badi Eshil, even Gusto when he come on, I think he made an error as well, let the ball bounce. Just the defending was just all over the shop. The way that they were able to go on that left-hand side and run past our players, leave them ragged, and then just cut back on Son tapping. Baddy and Shield giving the ball. Oh, they, were, they were honestly today, defensively, a joke. The attack bailed us out. The attacking players bailed us out today, seriously. And even all the attacking players weren't even at their best. Like I said with Jackson. And Cuckoo comes on. Felix comes on. Madaweke comes on. Um, you know, we make our changes. But we made it. All I care about is that we made it. We won the game. That is what means the most to me. This is a London derby. We hate Tottenham with all our, with all of our passion, with all of our energy. We hate, yeah. And on a weekend where others have dropped points around us, we've just given ourselves a gap, given ourselves a little bit of a of a step forward. And I'm just, I'm blown away. Honestly, I'm blown away by the game. That was prime Barclays. It was the most dramatic, most emphatic, most bombastic game discombobulated game you'd ever see in your life. I'm so thankful that we've won that game, guys. So thankful that we've won that game. There is definitely people that need to improve. There's definitely people that need to, to, to first of all, wear the right boots. Bootman, you might be getting docked wages today. I'll be real. Bootman moving mad, giving Kukure those boots, slipping and sliding all over that pitch. Badia Shil, horrendous. Sanchez, oh, at times. Jackson, be better. Lavia off the ball, be better. There's so much, like, to improve on. But I am just elated. I am just ecstatic. I am just overwhelmed. I am just exhausted. I took my top off today. I showed my tits. I couldn't care less, right? I was mashing up. Mashing up. <sighs> I said we'd win this game, and we just about did. We cut it close. We cut it fine on the line. So many lessons to learn. So much more information to take into our next game. But this was a very difficult game. Make no mistake. They were trying to bounce back from midweek massacres. And all sorts. And we we put them, we put them, we put them down. <sighs> People are gonna be asking us, are we in a tight race? Are we tight race? I don't care today. Today, I just wanna just enjoy the win. Leave that shit for the for the week ahead. They won't stop regardless. Guys, smash up the lights, subscribe. Big up Enzo Fernandez, big up Cole Palmer, big up um <sighs> big up Sancho. <sighs> big up your damn selves in a bit, people. Peace.